Okay, so in this video clip, <clears throat> I'm going to take us through uh, some uh, open source uh, project repositories made available by JP Morgan Chase. And uh, fundamentally, what we have here is a whole set of repositories that could be useful to anybody in the financial arena. In particular, I'm going to look specifically at the Python training. And if you go in there into their GitHub, which is publicly available, anybody can access, anybody can use, go down to its notebooks um, here. We can take a look at uh, the different types of modules that they have made available. But basically, the course here seems to be designed to be an introduction to numerical computing and data visualization in Python. It's not a, designed to be a complete course in computer science or programming but rather a motivational demonstration of how relatively complex topics can be accessible even to those without formal programming backgrounds. So it looks like a very nice tool. Um, I checked out a little bit what the public pronouncements were in terms of what JP Morgan was doing in the Python space. There's an article here from the Financial Times from Laura Noonan, and she sort of spells out a little bit the determination determination of JP Morgan to try as much as possible to embed in um, Python training. So we can see here all 300 analysts joining JP Morgan's asset management division this year have been through mandatory coding training under a new pilot scheme. About a third of the analysts and associates at JP Morgan's corporate and investment bank were also put through this program. And they say something similar about Goldman Sachs also investing heavily in technology. Uh, coding is not just for tech people. It's for anyone who wants to run a competitive company in the 21st century. So that's head of JP Morgan Asset Management. Uh, the coding training for this year's juniors was based on a Python programming, which will help them analyze very large data sets and interpret unstructured data such as free language text. And next year, the Asset Management Division will expand the mandatory tech training to include data science concepts, machine learning, cloud computing. And so it's a fairly kind of, uh, you know, strong commitment, strong signal to, you know, nurture this aspect of um, the, the skill set of especially new um uh, employees and uh, people in the more kind of quants area. Now, for us to take a look here to do a bit of a dive into what's available, let's go into, now I'll make available the link to this under the video clip. But to take a dive in here to see what's available, uh, we might just go into the basics, right, as the starting point. And again, in GitHub, if you have... Um, a public resource like this that you would really want to observe what's going on and maybe play around a little bit with the code in your own um, Jupyter Notebook, you can always copy the link, the URL, and then go into... Now, you, you should, if you're using Google Colab, have a Gmail account or a Google account. So just here in the Chrome browser, which is optimized for collaboratory, we'll open up Google Collaboratory. And again, if it's something from the GitHub, if it's a link, URL link to the GitHub, a specific GitHub, we can find that by just pasting in what we copied here. So Control V and we'll search and it's found the link it would appear and that uh notebook jupyter notebook should now be available in our collaboratory um if we wanted to save this and make it our own just come down to save so file save as now um if you want to make edits and changes to the notebook uh ameliorate I recommend you save a copy in your own drive that will turn up in your Google Drive. And whatever filing conventions you have in operation, I normally just put a date in reflecting the date that I worked on a specific project. And we'll put 23 
and I'll just save that. So I have a copy of that now available in my own Google Drive that I can pull up at a later stage, just observe what's going on. Now, the first part here is a little bit of an overview, what the Jupyter Notebook represents. And that's sort of interesting. Um, Jupyter comes from three parts, a kernel, a web server, and a notebook app. All code run will be sent to and run on the kernel. The web server will handle sending code and results between the kernel and the notebook. Um, and to get started, all we need to do here is click on the code cell. And you can see here what we're doing just very basically is um, a creating ob an object A and an object B. So A is equal to three, B is equal to four. And if we sum the two together, we get seven. And if we if we divide, if we take A, uh, three and divide by four, 7 0 0.75. And then if we take A and then forward slash forward slash B, we get zero. So basically um, what we can do here, let's change the numbers around so we get a little bit of a better. So if there's something here that we're not quite familiar with, what if we said 10 forward slash forward slash two? And we get exactly five, right? So it's not quite, if we take um, A, which is four and divide by B, sorry, take A, which is three and divide by four, it's not quite one. So we're not getting uh, the full number. If we put 11 here and run, we'll also get five. If we put uh, 12 here and run the same, we only get five. So we're only getting the integer value back here. But if I put 15, I should get um, and divide by, let's say, or put uh, 12 divided by two, should I say, I'll, I'll get six. Okay, so it's giving us the whole number integer. Notice there aren't any types that are defined like other languages we can see the type object by simply calling type on it, okay? So what's A and B, are they integers? Okay, they're given as integers. And then if we take A divided by B, it's a float because it's 0 0.75. So we're getting a decimal and probably it'll map across naturally to a float. And if A is um, a character, uh, it comes up as a string and we can easily redefine A and run the cell again. So if, if we have A equal to 15 and B remember was equal to four, if we attribute 15 to A and then add to four, we get 19. Now that's a very basic introduction uh, to, you know, Python and some mathematical operations. Um, but it's a starting point and they're going in uh, relatively, uh, you know, putting the, the learning curve there out. That's relative, relatively gentle, you know, and if we multiply A, multiply, multiply by B and run that, we're getting 60. So uh, um, our value 15 by four, is equal to 60, you know? So the, the outline here is relatively straightforward and easy to track. And it's a resource that I recommend that you go through. Now, in the next video, I'll take a look at another one of these, probably the straddle here. And if there's issues that arise that I don't quite understand, the approach we can adopt is to integrate in ChatGPT so that we can elaborate or try to determine is there a clarification that we can obtain using uh, ChatGPT as a sort of a co-pilot in the learning process. And if you use ChatGPT with the different uh, notebooks here, you should be able to navigate in a relatively straightforward uh, manner.